G'day guys, how's it going? Welcome back of course to the Time Bomb channel and I hope all is good in your part of the world. Today in for an overview is a lovely old Hamilton double W10 and that's ref 664599 and it hails from way back in 1975. The watch is a sort of a love child in that I think um, CWC and Ham Hamilton were a split up of manufacturers and thus we have the Hamilton W10 and the CWC's G10. Um, but I'm not entirely sure what provoked that uh, split. Um, so if there's anything you can add to that his historical uh, timeline or narrative, uh, please do drop a comment down below because I'd really love to hear some more about it. Let me just zoom in a fraction. So. Uh, and the camera's gone. There we are. So these uh, W10s uh, were serviced, service issued watches between 1973 and 1976. They were made for uh, British Army, Navy and Air Force. And back of course when this watch was made, um, Vietnam was finishing. The Brits were heavily involved in Northern Ireland. Angola had just fallen into I think probably its first or second civil war, can't remember. The Khmers were raiding into Thailand and I wasn't very old. The key specs on this one then is that it is uh, 36 mils across, north to south, it's quite a diminutive um, 42 mils, you know, not, not very deep at all either. Let me just uh, pop that off the back so that we can see. Um, and then, sorry, yeah, I was, I was popping that off the back because I wanted to show you the lugs. The lugs then are at 18 mils, and I've taken it off there now and I can't show you a wrist shot, but I wanted to show you the lugs. Let me just pause and throw it back. Yeah, there we go. So yeah, as I just said, I wanted to show you the lugs um, and how, how it fits on wrist. My wrist is uh, seven and a quarter inch, uh, just for reference. Um, I think the watch is potentially just a little little too small for my, for my tastes, uh, but those are clearly my issues. I just think perhaps if it had a slightly longer north to south and uh, that larger wrist print, um, I would absolutely love it. But again, as, as I say, those are my <laughs> my issues because otherwise, as, as a watch to me, it is it is desperately full of historic charm and mystery as to where it's been and whose time uh, it has been managing in that in that uh, you know in those uh, forty plus years. As a collector's item though, um, if you are considering buying one, then definitely do your due diligence on the watches because there are several fakes around. Obviously there's, there's several, you know, reiterations or, you know, reinterpretations of them. Um, but a couple of things to point out. So the first thing that you should have a matte or satin uh, case uh, finish. It should not be polished. Um, it should feature the seven, these should feature the, the sample, 17 jaw Hamilton 649 movement, which looks a little bit like this, buzzing away here. There are several variants um, of these as well during the different years that they were issued. I also think that there's a Geneve uh, version of that, um, uh, uh, that movement also. Another thing to uh, focus on is the font, uh, specifically if you look at the zero in the 10, um, let me just move that out of the way, just a fraction for you. So it should be that long, tall uh, zero as opposed to a short, squat, round circle. Um, other things to notice as well, um, that the loom on the hour hand is squared off as opposed to finishing in a pointy uh, bit. The loom itself then, um, as the T in the circle denotes, is a combination of uh, tritium mixed in with uh, the loom that they used back in the day. I'm really not quite sure how that process works, whether they've used you know, a powdered form, I, I, I really don't know. So again, if you can add anything to how that process works of, of mixing tritium in with something else, please do drop a comment below because I'd really like to learn about that. Um, my understanding is as well is that the original um, military requirement or remit for these was a, was a, a muted uh, loom as opposed to dive watch standard. So clearly not as to have a, a torch um, on your wrist and massive, massive testament to the quality of the watch and the build at the time, because looking at this, you can just see that the loom has worn the years superbly. Yes, it's a little bit faded, but my God, that's not bad for what, 48 years, something like that. <sighs> anyway, yes. Um, another thing to notice on these is that as these are fixed uh, spring bars, you will notice here that you can see uh, spring bars or lug bars, and they're not spring bars really, are they? You can see that you can see the ends um, in the uh, crown side 
of the lug. You can just see that, uh, but on the uh, opposite side, uh, you can't see the end. So if you can see them on both ends, you know that's that's clearly wrong. So obviously what they've done, drilled a hole in there, banged it through, sealed it up, um, and then uh, filed it off at the end. Quite an interesting way of building watches. Um, the uh, crystal up top here, if the camera will just focus for me, is a replacement because the original one that came with this was so completely knackered and, and scratched, etc. But this is an OEM crystal. Um, again, so fantastic to be able to get hold of one of the uh, OEMs and, and still there so you can see what the watch uh, looked like originally. Hamilton are, of course, uh, very well known for the watches that they've produced for the US military over the years. You know, an absolute plethora of, 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 um, of, of options. And I think these vintage pieces make a brilliant addition to any watch collection simply because they provide something that little bit more unique, um, different, I think, to the, the mass produced watches of today. Um, and then to show you the, the case back here. And again, I think this uh, 1970, 1975 model was limited to 2000, around 2,000 units only. So you can clearly imagine that not many of them are still going to be around. So again, you know, lovely, very special to have in hand. Perhaps not as desired as the Dirty Dozen watches, uh, but that may, that may change over the next few years. So perhaps a little bit of an investment piece, if that's something as well that might be of interest. I mean, again, just up close, I absolutely love the uh, the train track rail, the uh, minute track around there. Um, just think, you know, with the loom blobs, um, it's just a, a very sim simple design, but it's still, but it's again, just the fact and the way that it has worn uh, the years and it still looks so stunning now is absolutely brilliant. Um, of course, the, um, what was I gonna say? The, the um, yes, the, the broad arrow there, just above the six, um, denoting British government property. Yes, those clowns think that they own everything. Um, as you'll see as well from looking at the back, this is a, a monocoque case uh, with the movement, etc., being a front loader. So again, if you're looking to do a little bit of maintenance on that, do take care um, when manipulating the, uh, the, the, the crown stem um, because it could be a little bit uh, delicate. But again, you know, a superb, superb piece of history. Um, this particular watch, uh, sadly, uh, is going to go for sale. Um, so if you're interested in the next couple of weeks, do drop me an email and I'll put you in touch with the uh, with the owner. Um, but yeah, man, I'd love to get I'd love to keep one of these. I just wish they made them just that fraction bigger. But I'm mean, a beautiful piece of uh, military history. And as always, I really look forward to your comments down below uh, hearing your thoughts on this one. Thanks, as always, for your time and for your view. And we'll catch you all in the next bit. Cheers, guys.